Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. Today we're doing a short little video about this uh, custom figure I have and this sort of little shrine to all these holocrons that he's collected. Um, this figure, which I will show you closer now, right there, all started because I had an extra Darth Maul horns piece. And... I kind of wanted to make something with that, and so I took the armor piece and the face of this, specifically. This is a Monkey Kid character. I have a second one, because I got about two of the set he came from. Uh, you can see it's a pretty nice face. That works quite well for, like, a, uh, a Sith with his... Tattoos, like specifically a Zabrak, which is the same species as Darth Maul. And the reds line up really well. The blacks line up really well. And it goes really, really well together. So that's what I went for for the head first. And then the body, <clears throat> I mean, I could have used this, but it's a little too monkey kid-like, I want to say tail piece is kind of cool. Um, so I purchased a Ninjago minifigure, specifically Kozu from Ninjago Legacy. He's one of the figures that actually has two torsos. Um, so the legs and the torso would be underneath this part, and that sits on... Oh man, that's kind of dark. That sits on the head post. Unfortunately, the way this is di designed, you can't put it on legs, so I don't really have a use for this other than put it on another four-armed person, I guess. Um, this is the headgear that comes with it, and the face for this specific figure I actually used on one of my other minifigures. This is the guy from one of my crew videos, and that's his face. So, you know, sometimes you, you luck out and you're able to use multiple parts of a figure in your custom stuff. Um, so that's explaining all the pieces I used to make him. Let's take another look. Um, I used a lightsaber hilt. That's that dark metallic gray. I really like that. It's got a good feel and it matches his armor too. Um, the sort of shrine thing is just something I kind of had. I had a bunch of pieces together. Um, actually, I think this used to be a small weapon rack. Yeah, I had like some tridents and spears and stuff on it, but I converted into this. I had a couple extra pieces just sitting around, slapped it together one day. And then I added some more details and stuff, and then I made it into like a Sith holocron shrine. So he's got one holding in his hand there. And then I've got all these other ones here. I've got some more over here. I try to make it so each one of these is a unique color. I got a whole bunch of extra ones. I just went through so many of my little bags of extra pieces. And a bunch of other little holocrons, Sith ones specifically over here. And the triangles, because Sith ones canonically are pyramid shaped. While the Jedi holocrons are cubes. Now, this piece, well, it's three pieces, technically. This right here is the Lego build for a holocron. This one is signifying that it's, you know, like active and being used. Um, any set that has a holocron, this is what they have in it. It's pretty nice. And so I used that design to make several others. If we get another one in red. And I figured, you know... Each of these is made by a separate Jedi, usually a master. And so they would have used materials that they had on hand. I mean, it's a crystal lattice, but you, you make it yourself. And so I have all these sorts of different materials that are made out of. And then I also change it slightly. So instead of having the... So the bottom piece and the middle piece are both one by one studs. Not studs, plates. That's what they're called. One by one stud. I almost said it again. One by one plates. I 
kind of like the more smooth look. The, it makes it a lot more cubey of having a one by one plate on top. I kind of like that a lot better. Um, I got a bunch of other ones. So like this is kind of a yellow with sand, tan color. Bunch of whole different things, you know. I've got this green and orange one. All various different types. Um, he's got these candles out here. It's a nice touch. And at some point, I'm thinking of maybe making an actual sort of display for him. Have real alcoves and have all of these holocrons displayed on him. I mean, it's going to be kind of a complicated, not so much complicated, but time-consuming design process, I, I'm sure. That's going to be well down the line if I ever get to it. I'm kind of satisfied with just how kind of cute and small the shrine is. Um, but it, the concept is there. Um, so I'm going to go into a little more like lore of my guy. Uh, I like to call him Darth Vitrion. And he starts off as like a scholar and is uh, picked up by a Sith Lord to become his pr apprentice because the Sith Lord is um, impressed with his, his ravenous hunger for knowledge and his willingness to go to almost any length to uh, acquire that knowledge. You know, kind of ruthlessness. Um, and while Atris, I mean, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler, but it is an old game. So if you haven't played it by now, it's, that's on you. Uh, how Atris, the Jedi master in Knights of the Old Republic 2, she is surrounded by a bunch of holocrons, both Jedi and Sith in her little archive kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, her downfall, her... Her uh, fall to the dark side was fueled by her arrogance and pride, seeing that, thinking that she'd be above temptation to the dark side. Um, whereas she fell that way, Vitrian, his fall to the dark side was fueled by just sheer greed. The more knowledge he gained, the more he desired. And so, like... To, to the exclusion of all other things, he wanted to gain more knowledge because you know he viewed knowledge as power. And taking that knowledge from other people was the easiest route. And it would also prevent others from having that knowledge, increasing the value of it. So he started to collect holocrons. You know, here and there, he'd pilfer a holocron from his fellow Sith. Um, but the easiest ones were taking them from Jedi. Um, I like to think that the first one he had access to, like, was early in his training, and his master, um, you know, cuts down a Jedi, and that Jedi just happened to have a holocron on him, and so they were able to get their hands on it, and him not being that far into his training, was still able to access that holocron. Because, you know, you have to use the force to access it, and the... A um, little bit of a spoiler here, too, but in Rebels, Darth Maul needs Ezra to activate the Jedi holocron, because as a dark side user, he can't use the force to make the holocron open. It just won't work. And so he's able to get into the holocron a little bit, um, not too much. And I feel that that frustrated him because he's got all this knowledge at his fingertips, li quite literally, that he cannot get to. And so he, willing to do basically anything, ends up doing something that no Sith has ever done. He trains 
an apprentice on how to use the light side of the Force. He literally takes a Jedi apprentice in order to uh, have somebody able to access that information for him. And, I mean, keep in mind, I just made all this stuff up fairly recently, actually. It was like two days ago at work. I was thinking about him because I was planning on doing this video, and I was like, you know, I need more than just a name and the fact that he likes to con collect holocrons. I need a motivation behind it. And I felt, you know, him, like, not giving a crap about the war at all, being a recluse and just like, give me more information. I need more knowledge. Send my little minions out to collect them through murder, theft, bribery, blackmail, you know, any means necessary, get it to me. Felt kind of like it fit him. That's something a Sith would do. And, you know, man, I, just, I like the color scheme on him. I don't know. I really, I'm really happy with how he came out. Just, just taking parts from a couple other figures and slapping them together. And it all started with having uh, an extra piece of something, so, you know. You know, keep that in mind when you're making your customs. Um, or not so much your customs, but when you're building your sets and you've got all those little extra pieces sitting there. You know, you can always use those. They are usable pieces. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave that here for this video. Um, I'm actually... I have the figure that I'm using for his apprentice. And uh, that's going to be the next one that I make. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.